Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Rocker Dog Podcast, the podcast that talks to music artists about their furry friends. I'm your host, Tim Dill, along with my furry friend, Charlie, the handsomest dog on the planet. And today we are happy to welcome pop and country singer Cassidy Pope to the show. Dropping today, October 13th, is Wasting All These Tears, Cassidy's version, which is a revamping of her platinum-selling hit from 2013. And this is her spirited rocker dog. My dog is Cuppy. He's a French bulldog and he's six years old. All right. And I understand he has a birthday coming up on what is October 4th? Yeah. Yeah, he does. he'll, He'll be the big seven. I know it's nuts and it's crazy. My boyfriend has a whippet and he, his birthday is about two weeks after cuppies. So they're the same exact age, just two weeks apart. Oh, wow. Fantastic. And that's, that's river, correct? That's river. Okay. I I saw him pop up. Uh, I'll, I'll ask you in a little while how, how this blended family works. So we'll we'll get to that, but right off the bat, tell me a little bit about the context you got puppy you know if you're going back six years what's happening in your life and your career and what kind of instigated bringing a dog into it at this point yeah I was on tour with Chris Young that was the year of our song think of you um kind of blowing up and I was on the road for almost that whole year but that it, getting a dog was always something my ex and I actually wanted to do and we both are musicians we both were on tour a lot at the time so the idea of getting a dog was really sweet and beautiful but didn't seem rational however my plans in 2017 were not taking me away from home very much so i just said you know what if you're gone a lot that's fine i'll be i'll be here with the dog and if i have to leave for whatever reason we'll figure it out so it was actually uh, my last tour stop in knoxville i got to meet cuppy So um, in a parking lot, (laughs) just met him briefly, couldn't bring him home that day, but um, eventually brought him, got him in in December after the tour was over. So yeah, got to meet him and and fell in love instantly when he was just like sleeping in my arms and drooling all over me. (laughs) I think you have a picture of that and you mentioned the drooling. So how did it come about, you know, uh, that breed and um, a puppy versus, you know, just all the variables? How did um, how did you land on uh, a black French bulldog? (laughs) I grew up with certain mixes of Shih Tzus. So it was like I at one point we had a Shih Tzu Maltese. We had a Shih Tzu Poodle. And I've always just had a, a just a big love for dogs that have the the squishy faces. And uh, I remember seeing Hangover and um, uh, gosh, I always forget his name. Galifianakis. I forget his first name. Oh, Zach. Zach Galifianakis had a Frenchie in that movie, and I just thought he was so cute. And I was like, wait, that's the perfect dog for me. He's small. If I if I need to bring him on tour, he could come easily on tour. But he's also kind of he's kind of grumpy looking, and he's he's you know snorty and just fun and so i've always i've loved french bulldogs since that movie and just being a musician and wanting to bring your dog on the road it's just a bit easier when they're kind of small um and yeah that that just kind of uh we agreed on that and um we did our research and we found him and i remember the lady that was taking care of him before we got him asked us what we wanted to name him and we we told her cuppy so she was actually calling him cuppy for those few months before we were able to take him home so he's yeah he's been cuppy since since the very beginning and what's the significance of the name well i wish it was something really sentimental and sweet but it was actually just my ex and i sitting on the couch adding py to the end of words and we (laughs) thought cuppy was hilarious So, um, and then it wasn't until after I got the dog and and I was posting about him that people said that was actually some, something to do with Freaky Friday or not Freaky Friday, Parent Trap. That was a name of like someone's stuffed animal or something. So that's not why we named him that, but it it definitely was fitting because he's so, he's just kind of unamused and and the name is so cute and sweet and he's just, he's just kind of the opposite. (laughs) So it's perfect. (laughs) Well, you landed on the most popular dog of 2022. Did you see that news? I did. I did. Uh, a, 
uh, ending the Labrador Retriever's 31 year reign as the most popular dog, which I was shocked too. But um, I mean, my neighbors yeah. have one, so it's not, you know, it's not too shocking. But um, and also, you'll be my 63rd show. And I believe we've only had one other French Bulldog profiled. Really? Yeah. Oh, man, you've got it. You've got Have you interviewed um, Simon Neal from Biffy Clyro yet? I haven't, but since you mentioned it, I will look him up and send him a note. <laughs> yeah. He's great. And he has two Frenchies. So. Oh, great. That'll, that'll, yeah. that'll double my total. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so speaking crazy, of yeah. touring, I've seen on occasion you've posted pics about can't wait to get home or upset that he's not on the road with you. Has he been on the road with you? Yeah, he, he comes with me when I'm able to get it, go on a bus because flying now that they've changed the rules with ESA, he's just not, he's never gotten used to getting in a carrier or anything. He's, he's just not about it. And I'm never gone. I, I can handle being away from him for a little bit of, of some time, but if it's like a long tour on a bus, I try to bring him with me, but yeah, it, I wish it was, I wish it was easier to fly with him because I would take him everywhere if I could. Right. Now I noticed too, you did have a shot of him. I think early on when you got him, you had flown, I think to LA with him. Mm -hmm. how, how is he flying? He is so good flying. Um, when he got, when he got neutered, I actually got him this surgery that they say is really helpful to Frenchies. It's called a soft palate surgery where they kind of open up their nasal passages and they just say it's like better, you know, it's just better for their overall well being. And so I got him that and um, people were were freaked out that I had him on the plane and they were like, isn't he going to, is, is he going to have an issue with the altitude? And I was like, no, he's like, he's, he breathes really well. And he just sleeps the whole time. Um, he, especially then he was still a puppy. So he was just zonked out. Um, of course I gave him his own little spot with his little, I put a blanket down for him. He's very spoiled even to this day. Um, and yeah, he, he, he fit right in, in LA, man. It was like dogs everywhere. So he, he was very happy. It was really sweet. <laughs> is he well-traveled given that trip plus a little bit of touring? He is. Yeah. He's been to a lot of, a lot of places that he, I mean, that are very random. Um, he, I, he's been with me to play a lot of college shows. Um, he's been with me just actually like a road trip that I take every once in a while. I try and take it, take it with him and, and River to um, my family's kind of house that's been in the family for a long time in Pennsylvania. So that's his place to go to just be a dog and run around and just like, you know, get in the creek a little bit and, and you know, he can't swim very well. So we just, we just keep an eye on him, make sure he's not, he's not unattended by the water, <laughs> but yeah, he's been a lot of places. It's really sweet. That's funny. Now I'm assuming this was your first dog as a young adult. So first time having sole responsibility, what were some of the challenges? I'll say what were some of the challenges early on, but I guess what are some of the challenges overall? Yeah. I mean, it was, it was a jolt for sure. I, I remember the first two months, he was was he was tough because he woke up every three hours to go to the bathroom right. and um we were told that you know it was good to have a little almost like a water dispenser that like rabbits use I in, saw that. in his cage and i'm like i wish we hadn't done that because i'm sure that's why we got woken up a ton throughout the night because he was just drinking water but yeah, the lack of sleep was was rough. I I do remember a couple of times he he had some health issues, um, nothing too out of the ordinary, just Frenchy things with skin issues and allergies. And um, I remember one time he got he, he I had to board him and he came home with like a little bit of a stomach bug. And I just remember I still get like this. I get very very just upset when he's sick because. Right. I don't know. He's my baby. So, and he can't tell me what's wrong. I just have to kind of do the process of elimination with food and just, it, it's awful when, when he's sick. So that was another thing that I, that I realized like, well, this is, this is a full on like maternal feeling I have for this <laughs> creature. And it's very intense. Yeah. It's funny that you mentioned about the water bottle. Cause I did see a picture of the crate with the, you know, exactly how you said, like you, you do a rabbit. Um, so he was, he was crate trained. He was, yeah. Did he take to and that I, well? He did. I, I think at, at first he was, um, he definitely 
you know, was defiant. And I think there is a there is a point in the Frenchie's like puppy life where they go through this period of defiance. And if you're not careful, it can continue through their whole lives if you're not like if you don't solidify that, you know, you're you're the master here. Yeah, he, he eventually loved it, but he never was one of those. He never like just went in there voluntarily. I would have to tell him and he might just like look at me for a while and then eventually go in. But yeah, he, he took to it well. Yeah, he's uh, he's a funny dog. He seems uh, full of personality. I noticed also the Nashville Dog Wizard was summoned mm-hmm. to do some training. So what what did what did you get out of training? Well, the the simple commands really. I was I was struggling to to you know get the the come thing to happen and the stay and the wait and all of that. Um, it, we really didn't stay on top of it as much as we should have. This was after uh, this was when I after my ex and I broke up and I was in a new relationship at that point and we just were like, why don't we get our both our dogs to go to the same trainer? That'd be good. And um, the comp, we, we've we been able to continue like the come command and we've been able to continue like the, the wait and the stay. But, mm-hmm. you know, they're, they're both, are, are they love to jump on people when they come in the house and I that, <laughs> that just, drives me crazy because some people are wearing pantyhose or something and they're like scratching. It's just, you know, they're spirited for sure, but maybe not the best trained, but yeah, he was amazing. Um, he, he did a great job with them and, and they, they still respond to the clicker if I ever use it. So. Okay. And speaking quickly of the X, was there any drama? Who's going to get the dog? Was there any, you know, was there a fight for the dog or was it kind of cut and dry who, who deserves a dog or, you know, whatever the situation may be. Yeah, no, it wasn't dramatic. Thankfully, um, we we kind of agreed to split custody, you know, a week on, a week off. But my ex eventually, you know, he I was home a lot more than he was, so he eventually was like, I mean, we I don't think we can continue this for like the next ten years of this dog's life. So you're home more. You've been you've been with him, you know, the most, and I think he would be really sad to to be without you. So let's just call it what it is and you know part ways and I'll you know it was it was sad because it's like you know I know I know if I had to do that I would have been devastated so um but I think yeah my ex has a dog now of his own so it's you know it's like a life thing that just happens unfortunately it's very sad and it was a very amicable thing so yeah it worked out and now you know he's got a a brother and he's very happy and in love with his little brother yeah, let's let's talk about that. Blending the two families, as they say, uh, was that an easy process? Did the two dogs accept each other right away or was it a slow process? It felt really slow because my boyfriend and I started dating and we would bring each other's dogs over and we would barely get a word in because these dogs just would not stop playing hard and being vocal and like growling and barking and running around, running into things, knocking things over inside i thought i mean this is a deal breaker if our dogs don't get along like and they it's not that they didn't but they were it was just very intense it was yeah. very difficult to sit and get to know someone when there's just like bah! things happening in the background so eventually i think they just got used to each other and they just chilled out they both also were around one when when they met so they weren't fully grown chilled out dogs yet but once they chilled out and once they kind of got used to just being around each other all the time it turned into a really sweet lovey cuddly thing um the dynamic is hilarious because river the big whippet is obsessed with cuppy the little frenchie and river will climb all over cuppy and <laughs> smother him and cuppy will just kind of snort and huff and puff and just be like get off me but um they still play very hard just not consistently which is great Okay. It's funny because yeah. they, they couldn't be more physically different. I mean, the Whippet <laughs> is so like slender and I mean, they're both muscular, but just slender muscles. And then Cuppy's kind of this little rock solid yeah. ball of like, <laughs> smushed face. Yeah. And the Whippet is so long and pointy. It's, yes. it's when I take them on a walk, it's, it's hilarious. People's reactions. They're like, well, that's, that's a duo right <laughs> there. I know. <laughs> Well, I noticed every birthday you usually come out with something very sweet to say, and I just want to pick a couple of those quotes. One was, this butterball has made my life so much more full since he entered it. So Aww. being who you are and you know the career you have, how does he add value to your life? He 
it's, I was just thinking about this earlier. It's really amazing because being in the music industry, it's, it's, there are really high highs and really low lows. And it's really nice to have something in my life that is just beyond all of that. And if there is a time where things are not going well, or I'm struggling, I, I have to take care of this dog. This is a, this is a living thing that I have to look after and make sure he's okay. And that gives me a bigger purpose than just my work and what I do. So he's helped me so much. And even just going back to, you know, I got him with NX. So there was a breakup. It was very hard. It was very heartbreaking. And this dog was just a saving grace for me. I mean, it was like, there was a reason to get up and go outside to take him on a walk. There was something there that was that needed me that made me feel loved. So there, just anytime there's there's a, a rough patch of life, this little guy is just like, he doesn't know what's going on. He doesn't know that if I am disappointed in how a single's not blowing up or if how many people show up to a show that I play, he's just like, I'm his mom and he just wants to be loved. So that's just been something that's like made, it's just kind of put everything into perspective. So it's, right. it's been great. Right. Okay. On the heels of that, on another birthday, you said, I never thought I could love a little chubby, squishy pup so much. <laughs> So, oh, no. God, <laughs> got to work on my but, captions here. <laughs> <laughs> but that just begs the question from me is, were you surprised at your reaction and love to taking in, you know, a dog like this? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I've always loved dogs. I grew up with them. And I think while that makes you a dog lover, it sometimes I feel like desensitizes you to like a dog being around. And so I just was always used to that. So being an adult without a dog was like, okay, I mean, this is fine. I could, I could do this, but eventually that itch came and I was like, I don't know. I, I really want a dog. I just didn't, I didn't know how I would just think everything he did was so special. Like anything, the way he looks at people, the, the <laughs> way he walks, I'm like, look at, like sometimes I'll just annoy my boyfriend because I'll just send him videos of Cuppy and River. And he's like, they, they do this every day. Like this is not a new <laughs> special thing. I'm like, I know, but it's so cute. <laughs> so just being being obsessed with all of the little things is like, is embarrassing, but that's a surprise. Yes, I have a note that uh, obsessed is used quite a bit in your descriptions. And yeah. there, there's, there's the, I don't even have to ask, <laughs> ask that question. <laughs> Um, yeah. What's what I find fun about doing this show, you know, with musicians such as yourself, is there's always these instances where the dogs will show up to places, whether you know on record or in video. So, I just want to touch upon that a little bit. I noticed uh, you did a Star Magazine where you guys had your photograph in Star Magazine, and there's oh, also God. your Tomorrow Night video. Oh yeah. Which I'm curious to ask because you had mentioned that that was the first time you wrote a treatment for one of your own videos. So yes. take me through that process a little bit. I just, I had immediately, uh, as soon as I got the song back, I just had this treatment pop into my head. And I was like, what if, you know, the whole video, it talks about being excited to, to, to see someone. And you're like, you know what, can't we just skip to when we're going to see each other and just make it happen tomorrow night instead of like, or tonight instead of tomorrow night, like we had planned just that excitement. And um, I thought, you know, it would be fun to have a twist in the video where I'm actually singing about dog sitting this dog. Nice. And of course, it's my dog. But um, he, I, 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 like I said, he's, he's, um, he's spirited. He's not super trained, but he listens and he'll, he's very food motivated. So that that video shoot was literally me just like hiding a treat in my hand to try to get him to do things. And, and he did, he did great. Like I'm, I'm, I'm so proud of him. He got really tired out from just exploring the house that we were shooting in for the first 15 minutes that he actually was pretty chill the rest of the time. And it was, it was, I was really proud of the way it turned out because I, I wrote the treatment and I got to have my dog in it and, and it, it looked great. So I was just, I was very happy with, with the end result. And he was a star. Was there any question about whose dog would be in it? Like did a oh, director no. step in and be like, oh, we need a trainable dog. You don't know these dogs. I mean, I actually have a background in advertising, so I know filming oh. how long it takes to do every little thing. And it's like, you want a professional in that role. <laughs> right. Yeah. Thankfully, you know, he, he was very understanding. Like 
I wasn't going to do it if it wasn't my dog, you know, because yeah. it just, I think that was, that was kind of the whole point. <laughs> it's like, yeah. it has to be a dog that I'm, that I love. It's my dog. But he, thankfully the whole video, basically I was in every shot with him. So as long as I'm with him, he, he'll do what he needs to do. I think if I were on the other side of the camera, trying to tell him what to do, um, he would run out of the, out of the shot constantly, I'm sure. So it was, it was actually a lot easier than I expected, even though he's not this perfectly trained dog. Right. Okay. There's also been a number of opportunities that I think have popped up because you are a, a dog person. Um, one was you designing a, a bed, the snow yeah. leopard bed. How did that yeah. come about? Was that like one of those affiliate programs where you could design it and then it goes up on like an Amazon and then it just, you know, a, yes. Yeah, a company got in touch with, I think it was my management at the time um, to to do this. I mean, at this point, I think it was like, like two years ago. Yeah, they just like asked me what some of my favorite prints were and, you know, would, would I be down to do like a photo shoot with my dog in the bed? And um, I just love that because people, I've shared so much about Cuppy over the years that people really are invested in this dog right. and his well-being. And so I was very, very surprised and excited how many people actually did buy the bed. And um, we didn't continue to do it because, it, you know, there's so many things on Amazon these days that it just yeah. it, it was like, OK, th that was fun. But <laughs> yeah, it was it was a really cool little project that we did and it turned out great. I still have the bed upstairs. It's It's amazing. Yeah, it looked great. It looked great. Mm -hmm. uh, the other one I, I stumbled upon, there's like four or five of them. The Pedigree Foundation Home for the Polidays, po Polidays campaign. Yeah. Uh, what was that about? Well, I, I popped in to see they had a, basically a gathering where they had a bunch of dogs for um, available to rescue. And um, it was it was so cool. It was it was just like a ton of a ton of free um, products obviously a lot of dogs to rescue and just in general, them kind of spreading awareness to the fact that they do have this nonprofit um, that people don't realize they have. They think of pedigree and they think of, you know, the, the big company and, and all right. their products and food and stuff, but they're actually doing some amazing work. So I, I went just kind of to spread the word and, and post about it to bring awareness that this is happening. Come rescue these dogs. I mean, there's like one in particular that I almost brought home myself had to, <laughs> had to really just have some self-control and um, yeah, that, that was a really nice day. Okay. Um, another one, which I'm curious about was this um, Mars pet care airport certification. It was like yeah. pet friendly travel options. That sounded yeah. interesting. Amazing. Yeah. They, they, um, they had, made an installation here in, at the Nashville airport at BNA and um, they just wanted someone to kind of have their, their dog and, and themselves like model around the little pet relief area. So they, they just were kind of like, you know, had this campaign of letting people know, Hey, this is, these are being installed everywhere and you can now travel with your dog a lot easier. So that was, that was fun. Oh, great. Great. And then it's funny, an old client of mine was mobile Delvac and you did a mutts for truck, which I believe was a push to match dogs with truckers. Yeah. Shelter dogs yeah, with truckers. That's really sweet. That's a very interesting oh take. Yeah, it's such a, I mean, it's a very common partnership. People go on the road and they need a companion. And for the, for the dog, it's really fun because they're, they're getting to travel and see all these different places. And they're always, always with their owner and, you know, when you think about being a trucker and, and going out and traveling all that way alone, I'm sure it gets very lonely and it's probably hard on your mental health and, and having a companion like that who needs you, who depends on you, I think is just like a really, it's just a beautiful campaign. I just thought that was really special and, and creative. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's great that you can't, you know, all these opportunities come to you. I mean, even I won't call my show an opportunity, but just the fact that your publicist had to go, okay, there's a show about dogs. They want to talk to you, but it's like <laughs> the fact that, you know, how does word get out that you're a dog person? And once it does get out, then people see the opportunity and seek you out. That's, it's gotta be a nice, kind of a nice thing. It is. And it's not, you know, I, I, by any means, I'm not like, I don't have a famous dog or anything. I know Doug the Pug has just like completely just <laughs> changed the landscape of what it is to be like a famous pet. But, um, you know, it is, it is really rewarding when I know that I've shared enough of my life to where um, these very unique opportunities come by where I'm either just getting to 
brag on my dog or I'm able to use my platform to help bring awareness to organizations and, and stuff like that. So it is um, a very unexpected branch of my career. <laughs> I just never thought would happen. So it's, it's cool. Well, Cuppy the Puppy on Instagram is just shy of 10,000 followers. So you got to break that <laughs> threshold because it might put you in another algorithm that who knows what will come after that. <laughs> So I know, maybe when the, when the show comes out, push it on that channel. Perfect. Love that. Thank you. Um, any tattoo in your future of copy? Yeah, I definitely someday, you know, the day that I'm dreading that we all dread, I'll probably get, I was thinking like a silhouette of a Frenchie head, or I was thinking his birthday. I'm just not really sure. I definitely won't get the name, the name cuppy on my body. Cause that's weird. But um, maybe if it was a better name, but yeah, I, I'm definitely going to get a cuppy tattoo at some point when, when okay. I feel that I need it, you know? Okay. Well, you don't, you don't need to wait. I was going to say, it doesn't have to be in the I morning. Know. It could be to, to salute the guy every day of his life. That's true. That's true. I know. I don't have to wait for that, that God awful day. <laughs> And you insinuated this earlier about fans, and I'm I'm curious. I, I think I know the answer, but it, Cuppy's been kind of a part of your brand now for six mm -hmm. years. Do people when they when there's meet and greets, do they ask you about the dog? Do they ask where he is? Do they want to see him when you are with him? Is yeah, he more famous than you? I mean, I don't know. I think the fans like him more than I than they like me, to be honest. But um, yeah, I am constantly being asked about Cuppy, and it makes me so happy. And it kind of it kind of creates this like deeper connection with with my fans because they're asking me about something that is not music related that is about my life that is about like obviously a creature that i'm obsessed with and love so much so it just kind of like i don't know it just makes the conversation more personal like innately so i really love when people do that and i have brought cuppy to meet and greets before and people love that so um He's sometimes he gets he distracts me and I feel like sometimes I'm more concerned with what he's doing than like connecting with my fans. Right. So I have to have to be careful. I don't bring him every all to every meet and greet, but uh, every once in a while. And it's a, it's a cute little treat. Yeah, I bet. I bet. Well, I wind up every show with what I call the zoomies. And that's the mm -hmm. last five quick questions. The first okay. question, I know the answer because on your social media are pictures and videos, but the question is, do you kiss Cuppy on the mouth? Yeah. And that's, sure the, right, that's the correct answer to me anyways. <laughs> I don't love the, like when he licks my mouth, I, I tend to, mm, no, but I, I'll take his face and kiss him right on the mouth with mouth closed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm with you on that. That's my boundary. <laughs> Okay. Question two is, does Cuppy have a theme song? Is there a, and this could be a number of different ways. Is there a song that a popular song that you'd kind of just attach to him? Is there a song that's popular when you got him that reminds you of him? Or is there a song that you've constructed that you sing to him? <laughs> oh God, I do sing to him all the time. <laughs> oh, do I share this? Okay. I don't know why I just started doing this one. Um, I call him my scrum dilliumptious bean. <laughs> but I sing it and I say, scrum dilly um just bean. <laughs> and he just, I'm, I don't know if he's aware of what that means. I also sing to both of them when they're just kind of living their lives and they're just so cute. I sing, what are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> and they love it. Rivers tail wags. Of course. But yeah, those are, those are, those are the songs that I, okay. I've written for them. <laughs> well, thank you for sharing. Thank you for sharing. And I, I'll just share that my dog, Charlie, <laughs> When I feed him, um, I usually cut up some chicken. So I've got this chicken for char little oh. melody that that I, I don't know if he likes it. He's kind of plays poker face with that. But oh, I, I, I had to sing mine. Uh, well, <laughs> now we got to move on to the next. We're, I've got my eye on the time, as I've said. Before. Oh, yeah, sure. Uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> OK, question three is. Cuppy's been on tour with you. Have you had the opportunity to put anything special in your rider for him and if not what would you no i haven't that's a really that was a that's a good idea um if i did put anything i'd probably put like a a, a ball of some sort oh he really likes the kind of medium-sized um like blow-up balls that that 
like you usually get for a kid to kick around the yard because okay. he can't get a hold of it. So it just slips around and he loves it. Okay. Again, I think I've seen I video that. of exactly what you're talking about. Oh, he goes, he goes crazy. <laughs> he makes the, those Frenchy sounds that are, are wild. <laughs> Question four is, do you have a dog voice? Do you speak to Cuppy in a certain tone or, 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 and do you give him a voice of his own? Oh, um, I don't give him a voice, but I definitely speak to him in a certain voice um, that is, oh, not great. <laughs> it's probably very annoying and I'm like terrified to do it. But yeah, he, um, he definitely like, it'll wake him up. And I don't, I don't like scream or anything, but he knows when I talk in that voice that like cuddles are coming or, or like treats are coming. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's good. And <laughs> last but not least, is there a dog organization or service you'd like to give a shout out to? Definitely. Um, there is a, a, there are a couple of rescues here in Nashville that I, that I love. Um, there's Wags and Walks. They have opened a, a, a new um, location here. They're incredible and they just are very, they're very good at making sure the foster situation is safe. Um, there are some some organizations that that um, don't have a lot of rules in place for fostering and there have been some pretty, honestly, I know a songwriter who was attacked and um, the dog shouldn't have been like at, at the lake on a busy day. It was, it was not, not good. Um, and they are very good at making sure all of those legalities are in place. Love them. And I also really love uh, Nashville Humane uh, Association. And um, they're very long, long running rescue here in Nashville. They um, they will bring dogs over from Puerto Rico that have been rescued. They their their initiative is, is a bit more widespread than just Nashville. So they're mm -hmm. incredible as well. Great, great. Well, thank you for sharing. I know we're, we're well aware of Wags and Walks being we get a lot of people from Nashville on here. And yeah. um, Nashville Humane, you hosted the ninth annual Unleashed event back in 2019. <laughs> yeah. Have you have you done it twice or just that one time? I just did it that one time. It was, you know, then COVID hit and I don't I'm not sure. Like, I think it's still happening, but it took a while, obviously, to come back. But it was so fun. It was 80s prom themed. So my boyfriend oh my and I God. got to dress yeah. up. And we got to put the dogs in little bow ties and um, I got to meet all these sweet little angels that were up for adoption. So it was awesome. Now, does, I've noticed Cuppy's had to dress up on a number of occasions, mostly Halloween. Does, does he enjoy that or no? Well, you know, he doesn't really change his expression very much. So I don't know if he's angry or if he's just used to it, um, but he... I, I can I can confidently say he doesn't love the um, bunny costume that I put on him every Easter. I put it on him. Granted, I put it on him for about, you know, a minute to get a picture. And then I'm like, OK, you're free. But yeah, I don't think he loves that one. OK. All right. Well, Cassidy, thank you for taking your time and, you know, taking me through Cuppy and a little bit through River. I'm sorry. I'll have to talk to your boyfriend on, on his own yeah. River story. But I, I have to admit, I fell in love with Cuppy, you know, just through your, your social media. And, and like I said, I've got a neighbor with a, a French bulldog and I haven't spent a whole lot of time, but I just, the personality, he just seems so funny. He's he so, so funny. funny. Yeah, Gosh. I mean, the, I constantly am laughing because he just does things that are just, at some time, I mean, he's doing something new every day. It blows my mind. I love it. <laughs> All right, well, I'll let you get back to uh, your artistry, but thank you again and uh, I really, really appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. It's been my pleasure. All right. Thank you, Cassidy Pope, for coming on the show and sharing your highly entertaining dog, Cuppy, with us. Her song, Wasting All These Tears, Cassidy's version, is out today and available wherever you buy or stream your music. Cassidy elected to give a shout out to two great dog organizations. The first is Wags and Walks, who last week's guest Sean McConnell also gave a shout out to, which makes them our first back-to-back -back shout out recipient. They are a dedicated community of dog lovers whose main goal is to break the stigma around rescue dogs and decrease the number of dogs euthanized in local shelters by proving that you can rescue wonderful pups of all breeds, sizes, and temperaments. For more information, visit wagsandwalks.org. The second was the Nashville Humane Association, who since 1946 has dedicated their efforts to aiding sick, homeless, and at-risk shelter pets in Nashville, throughout Middle Tennessee, and across the globe. 
To adopt, foster, volunteer, or donate, visit NashvilleHumane.org. Thank you for listening to the show. For more information about our guests and their dogs, follow us on Instagram at Rocker Dog Podcast. Subscribe to the show so you never miss an episode like the one we have for you next, featuring another Dachshund Dad. I think that breed might be taking over the show. All right, I need to give a certain sad-faced dog my undivided attention. We'll see you next week. <laughs>